Okay, so we are on pages 38 and 39. We already started chapter two, lesson two of our social studies. We're just gonna be talking about some of these groups today that we have, um, some of those settlers and those Native Americans in Indiana that settled. Um, and then we're gonna talk about how they adapted to the land and then a little bit of their trading too, because remember a lot of them were big with trading. Okay, so first we are talking about the Potawatomi, Potawatomi people. Um, and you can tell because that's what the heading says. So remember, look at those headings whenever you um, answer some of those questions because you are going to have a chart after this that you're going to answer questions on. Make sure you look at those headings because that will help you with that chart. So those headings tell you what that paragraph is going to be about. So the Potawatomi, the Potawatomi came from the area that is now the states of Wisconsin and Michigan. They settled in the northern part of Indiana near Lake Michigan. There they found better soil for farming. They also found an abundance of fish in Lake Michigan and nearby rivers. So these Potawatomi people were big fishers, okay? They settled near Lake Michigan so they could um, have something somewhere to fish. The Potawatomi built wigwams, so this group built wigwams too. Remember we talked about the Miami people yesterday and how they built wigwams out of um, tree branches and bark and animal furs and animal skins. The Potawatomi built wigwams similar to those made by the Miami. However, they covered the wigwams with mats of woven reeds. Reeds are easily found near the Potawatomi lands. In the river, or in the summer, the Potawatomi lived in longhouses. A longhouse is a large house where many people lived. Up to seven families could live in one longhouse. People made longhouses from poles cut from trees and covered with bark. Okay, so these people built longhouses to live in. Here, a lot of different families could live in one house, so that's what they were used for. Um, one thing I want to talk about with the Potawatomi people is look at, we talked about the Miami, how they built wigwams too. Um, and now we know that the Potawatomi people built wigwams as well. So what were some differences? How did they build them differently from the Miami people? Well, there's a key word in this paragraph, in the second paragraph down, it says, however. Okay, that's showing that there's a difference. So however, they covered the wigwams with mats of woven reeds, okay? So the Miami people, remember, they used the tree bark and the fur um, the animal skins to cover their built to cover their wigwams. The Potawatomi people, it looks like they covered theirs with mats woven of reeds. Okay, so that was a difference between their wigwams. Um, still the same concept. It was a round house, but they made them a little bit differently by using different materials. Um, and then we also, I want to also to point out to you what natural resources influenced the Potawatomi to settle near Lake Michigan. And we kind of talked about this. They were big fishers, so they wanted to build near a lake so they could have that fish. They could have that food um, to live off of. Now we're going to talk about the Lenape people. So unlike the Potawatomi and Miami people, the Lenape came to Indiana from lands to the east, okay, so that's unlike them. The Potawatomi people came from um, Wisconsin and Michigan, which is more from the north. So this group came from eastern states. European settlers and a more powerful Native American group forced the Lenape to leave their homeland in what is now the state of Delaware. They traveled west, eventually settling in Indiana. There um, were three Lenape clans, the Wolf, Turtle, and Turkey clans. I did not know that. Sons were expected to marry women from other clans, so they needed to marry. There were three clans in the Lenape people, and they needed to marry from those different clans. And children belonging to their mother's, to their mother's clan. Lenape villages could be large, with as many as 200 residents. Groups of relatives lived in longhouses in the summer. Like other Native Americans in Indiana, small family groups moved to camps in the winter to hunt. The oldest women in each longhouse chose the sakem or chief. 
Each Sakam was a member of the village council. Chiefs were expected to look out for the well-being of the whole community. They also led the people in religious ceremonies. Okay, so the Miami had kind of religious leaders too, and that's what these people were too. Um, and then we have a picture of a Lenape wigwam, and it looks like they used tree bark, so theirs were a little bit more like the Miami wigwams. Um, so one question I have for you, how did the, how did the reasons why the Potawatomi and Lenape come to Indiana differ? Okay, so how did they differ? Well, the Potawatomi came to find better soil, so they wanted to farm, they wanted that agriculture, and the Lenape were driven because there was a more powerful group of Native Americans that kind of pushed them out of where they were. So that's why they came. So the Potawatomi people came for better land, the Lenape were pushed out of where they were living. Okay, so now we're gonna read about the Shawnee. The Shawnee too were forced to leave their original homelands in the east by a more powerful Native American group. So like the Lenape, they were also pushed out of their area that they were living, so they came to Indiana. They settled, settled along the Maumee River and also lived in wigwams covered in bark, grasses, and reeds. Like the other Native Americans of this period, they farmed and hunted. Every Shawnee person belonging to one of six clans, turkey, turtle, rounded feet, horse, raccoon, or rabbit, children were members of their father's clan. So in Lenape, okay, so let me explain this really quick. So there was different clans in both the Shawnee group and the Lenape group, and you were supposed to marry out of that clan. So if you were in the turtle clan, you had to marry somebody in, somebody in, a, in a different clan. So the Lenape people, whoever they married, once they got married, they had kids, their kids were part of the clan that their mother was a part of. So if their mother was a part of the turtle clan and the Lenape, and the Lenape people, um, if their mother was a part of the turtle clan, that's what the kids were. Now the Shawnee were a little bit different. They took their father's clan. So if their father was a part of the horse clan, um, then they would be a part of the horse clan, even though their mother was a part of the rabbit clan. Okay, so just kind of a difference between the two there. Children were members of their father's clan in the Shawnee. The title of chief passed from father to son. Each village had a large council house, which was used for meetings and celebrations. Their most important celebration focused on food and farming. Okay, so um, if we're making comparisons, again, we're just talking about the Shawnee and the Lenape clan or the Shawnee and the Lenape people, they both had different clans, um, so they both had that similarity. A difference was where the children belonged. In the Lenape clan, it was wherever their mother's clan was. In the Shawnee clan, it was wherever, or in the Shawnee people, it was wherever their father's clan, whatever their father's clan was. Okay, so how did leadership among the Lenape and Shawnee people differ? So among the Lenape people, women appointed the chief, and among the Shawnee, it was passed down from father to son. Okay, so Lenape, the women um, elected or appointed the chief. So kind of like what we do now with the president, we elect the president, but it was just the women that did it. And in the Shawnee group, it was kind of passed down like a king passes his leadership role down to his prince, right? And then whenever the king dies, the prince gets that leadership role. So a little bit different there too. Okay, our last clan, or our last, I keep calling them clans, our last people, um, our last Native American group was the Kickapoo. I like this name, it's kind of fun to say, Kickapoo. The Kickapoos resisted when stronger Native American groups moved into their lands in the area that is now the states of Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin. However, despite their skill in battle, they, were, they too were forced to find new homelands, so they were kind of kicked out too. By the early 1700s, they settled in Indiana. The Kickapoo worked hard to keep their culture from changing. So they didn't want, they didn't want to change. Unlike many other groups, they did not want European traders bringing new things into their villages. Like other Native American groups, they lived in wigwams, raised crops, and hunted or fished. So a lot of them, to make a living, 
and to have their products to eat um, either had agriculture or they hunted or they did a little bit of both. Um, so like other Native American groups, they lived in wigwams, raised crops, and hunted or fished. In summer, they lived in dome-shaped homes near their fields. In winter, they moved to hunting camps and built oval-shaped wigwams that were easy to move from place to place. So they would move based on the season, okay? So they would move. So whenever it was summertime, they would move more towards their fields so they could farm. And in the wintertime, they moved more towards that hunting, that good hunting ground. The Kickapoo were among first, the first Native Americans to ride horses when hunting. The Spanish had, brought, had first brought horses to America in the 1500s, but some horses had run wild. The Kickapoo learned how to catch and ride the wild horses. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So they would learn to catch and ride wild horses. Why did the Kickapoo resist trading with Europeans? Why did they not want to trade with Europeans? They didn't want to lose their culture, okay? They didn't want to, they didn't want those outside influences to change their culture that they're used to, okay? So they wanted to keep what they were used to. And um, what advantage did the Kickapoo have over other Native American groups when hunting? Um, well, one advantage was they could catch those wild horses. So when they hunted, they would use those horses and they could go faster, okay? So that was one advantage that they had over other Native American groups. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now is, um, well, first off, let's look at number three. It says, compare and contrast. These Native American groups had such so much in common, but they also had differences beneath the name of each group write one detail that was different or unique about each group. So that's what I want you to do now, is just write one detail under each group that was different, that you found different from the other groups that we read about. Okay, so for the Potawatomi people, what did you see that was a little bit different about them? For the Lenape people, for the Shawnee people, for the Kickapoo people. Okay, so go ahead and do that, and then um, you can go to the next slide and we will continue reading and actually finish up lesson two of chapter two.